Today, I'm gonna to answer a question that puzzled me and that's puzzled many musicians for ages, which is how many repetitions do we really need to do to improve as fast as possible? And in my experience, maybe like yours as well, I've heard it all. I've heard people say, practice until you get it right and then move on. Uh, just play it five times, play it seven times, play it a thousand times, etc. Now, the good news is people have actually researched this stuff so we can finally get some clear answers as to what the best strategy is for repetitions. And by the way, if you're new here, my name is Diego Alonso. I have been a professional classical and flamenco guitarist and teacher for over 20 years. And my guitar journey was quite challenging, mostly because I just frankly didn't know how to practice the right way. So I went back to school and after doing a master's thesis on expert practice strategies and then years of ongoing research, I finally figured out the secrets uh, to effective practice. And actually the reason I made this YouTube video and the reason I make videos like this one is actually to help musicians and guitarists like you learn effective practice strategies right away so that you can avoid the same struggles that I went through. With that said, let's figure out exactly how many repetitions we need to do to improve as efficiently as possible. Now, in order to do that, there are six things to keep in mind when repeating your phrases. Number one, make sure not to spend too much time repeating things that you can do well. Instead, do what expert musicians do and focus mainly on the areas that you need the most work, right? All your weaker areas. That's where you're gonna make the most progress. Number two, make sure that when you're repeating something, your intention is to improve it, not just to repeat it. And, and I know that may sound super obvious, but I can't tell you how many times I've caught myself repeating something and then thinking about the laundry or grocery stores and you know, you end up maybe unconsciously getting into mindless practice. So do your best to really focus on having uh, an improvement goal in your repetitions. Now related to that is number three, which is that every repetition needs to be strategic. So we need to first figure out the problem that we're running into, figure out the cause, come up with a solution to fix that cause, implement it, and then get some kind of feedback. Now feedback, you know, let's say you're, the problem is you're missing a note, right? The, the, challenge, the cause of that is maybe your finger's too low. The solution, raise the finger. Then you try it out. There's some obvious feedback if you hit the note, you can hear it, right? But there's some situations where you can't really figure out, you, you can't figure out if your solution is working. In those cases, what I recommend doing is recording yourself, audio or video recording, and then listening back right away. And in another case, if you don't have that available, or if you still can't get um, you know, the feedback that you want from that source, find a teacher or a colleague who can give you feedback as long as they are familiar with what you're doing. Number four, make sure to mix up your material. So instead of repeating the same thing over and over again and then moving on and then repeating over and over again, you wanna repeat fewer times and you wanna do so in sets of, with, that are mixed with other tasks. So for example, instead of doing task A, 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 B, 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 C, 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 you wanna do A, B, C and then repeat again A, B, C, A, B, C. This is a practice strategy called interleave practice, which has been shown time and time again to accelerate learning and motor skill development. And finally, please, Never repeat anything or never practice in general while distracted or multitasking. There is plenty of research out there that shows that multitasking and distractions, all they do are just hinder the learning, the learning process. What we want to do instead is do our best to increase our level of concentration before we sit down to practice and then try to maintain that high level of concentration during the practice session. Now, by the time you're done practicing, you should feel pretty mentally exhausted, like you're gonna to wanna to break. You don't wanna feel physically exhausted, but mentally exhausted, you wanna feel like your brain has worked quite hard and you're gonna need a little bit of downtime to, uh, to, to get away from any other tasks. So make sure to do that. High concentration is always gonna give you the best results, okay? So if we keep those starting points in mind, then we can really effectively address how many repetitions we need to do to accelerate faster. First, let's look at two studies on successful repetitions. The first one is by researchers uh, from Yale University that found that the ideal success rate for motor skill development is around 70%, which means that we wanna end our total repetitions so that 70% of them are correct and about 30% of them are incorrect. Now for cognitive skills, there is a 2019 paper published by uh, authors Wilson et al. They suggest that for cognitive skills, like for example, memorizing a phrase, maybe you're memorizing music theory, your key signatures, or you're doing mental practice, that an 85% success rate is optimal for learning. Now since the guitar is really a combination of both motor skills and cognitive skills, it makes sense to me to end our reps within that range, 70 to 85% success for significant improvement. But I think it's important to start at around that 70% mark. So let's call the strategy the 70 to 85% success strategy. And here's an example. So let's say you're learning to play a phrase or a line of music and you make one mistake and you get the next one right, which is pretty common. According to the 70% success research, you would need to follow that up with two correct repetitions for significant learning. 
And then once you reach the 70% rate, it makes sense to gradually move toward the 100% success rate so that you have a better chance of minimizing errors in performance. Now, keep this in mind, we are human beings, right? So 100% success in performance is not likely. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a performance where everything has been perfect, right? Whatever that means, 100% of the time. I've seen Paco Lucia perform a million times, well, maybe not a million times, but several times, Vicente Amigo, plenty of, uh, plenty of classical guitars as well. Everybody makes mistakes. The thing is, they tend not to make major mistakes. They make really minor mistakes that I think only trained musicians could even pick up. Most of the audience doesn't even notice them. I think it's important to just keep in mind that mistakes are just part of the deal. It's okay, you don't wanna make a major mistake, but if you do, it's not the end of the world, right? So sometimes everybody has a bad day, it's, it's really okay. So keep that in mind, you wanna aim toward 100%, but please don't be a perfectionist. I was, the cause got me into a lot of trouble. Just do your best, have fun, and work toward that high goal just to minimize your, your, uh, poss your possibility of, of error on stage, okay? So anyway, here's some real life examples. Starting at 70%, again, we'll worry about 85% later, but for now, let's look at some actual numbers of what happens in a real practice session if we're gonna implement the 70% strategy. So you pick up your guitar or instrument, whatever you're playing, you're gonna work on this one phrase and you make a mistake, then you do it again, you slow down and you get the second one right. Then that means you need to follow that up with two more correct repetitions for a 75% success rate. So there's one mistake, three corrections, right? Right in a row. If you make two mistakes, which is more common, then you need to follow it up with five corrections. That's 71% success rate. That's This is the one that I find more common for myself and for many of my students, as long as everybody's really conscious about trying to correct. If we make three errors, three mistakes, that means we need to follow it up with seven correct repetitions. That's a 70% success rate. If we make four mistakes, that's 10 correct repetitions, 71%. There are two big warnings to keep in mind. One of them is a, an article from an article that I read in Noah Kageyama's bulletproofmusician.com, which is an awesome resource, by the way. I will have a link to that in the description. And in that article, uh, Noah Kageyama suggests that the more times we repeat something incorrectly, the worse our performance will be. So what this means is that it's not really about the, well, it's not just about the total amount of correct repetitions we execute, it's the incorrect repetition amount that makes the most difference in our progress. The second warning is that, I think it may be, maybe not as obvious as it should be, but for me it's now obvious because I've experienced all of this, but the more repetitions you do, the higher your chances are of developing some kind of repetitive stress injury. So you wanna keep your your total repetitions low, especially your incorrect repetitions low to avoid all of those things. I would highly recommend keeping track of the amount of repetitions that you do, by the way. Personally, I count them in my head first. Like while I'm playing, I make a mistake, I count it in my head. And then after I do all of my 70%, whatever percentage I end up at, I write that down in my journal. Like how many I got wrong, how many I got right. And I do that immediately and that helps me keep track of my progress. All right, I also do my best never to play more than two mistakes in a row. Again, so that I keep my total correction, uh, total repetitions down, especially my incorrect repetitions as low as possible. Now, again, we're human. You do your best to keep it down to two incorrect repetitions, but if you make a third one, it's really okay. Again, just do your best to keep the total uh, incorrect repetitions and total repetitions low. I think that's the that's the big takeaway that I would like you to get uh, from this one. It's not better to do 50 repetitions correct. That's just going to get you into into a lot of trouble, and you're going to get hurt, right? So, with all this said, it looks like we have a pretty good strategy, but is it really that simple? I mean, can it really be the case that we can make significant progress if we follow up just two errors with five correct repetitions and then leave it at that? Earlier in the video, I mentioned some things to keep in mind when repeating material. And one of them was to use interleaved practice. There's an article that I found fascinating in the Journal of Neurophysiology. I'll have, again, a link to that in the description below. And in that article, it showed once again that interleave practice enhances skill acquisition. This article also talked about keeping repetitions low and interleaving um, during the interleave process. So you'll have a link to that. You can check that out. The reason interleave practice works so well is because it forces us to use more mental effort, more cognitive effort, when recalling our corrections the next time we run across the challenge, which all that does is it releases a whole bunch of neurochemicals which help solidify that information that we've recalled into long-term memory all right so next time you practice make sure that in addition to using our 70 to 85 percent success strategy you want to work on your material using interleave practice again abc 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 for example it doesn't have to be three uh things by the way you can work on two things you can work on five things it's however much you can hold in in your working memory all right like when you memorize a phone number and you don't write it down However much you can hold in working memory, that's what you can work on. Personally, I can usually hold like 
three to five, three to six things in working memory. So that's kind of my limit and everybody's different. I have some students who can do way more than I can and some who can do less. It doesn't matter, really, it makes no difference. It's just keep that in mind when you practice and make sure to use interleave practice. Now, of course, there is one more thing that we can do to really solidify progress long-term, which is something called overlearning. Now, overlearning is the process of continuing to repeat a skill even after we no longer improve or need to improve it. Now, the difference between the 70 to 85% success uh, rate strategy is that that strategy is aimed at improving a skill and the overlearning strategy is aimed at enhancing retention of a skill, retention of a skill that's already set, right? As long as you've accomplished your goal, now we're going to overlearn it to make sure that that gets uh, stabilized in long-term memory. There was a 2017 article on overlearning published in the, in the journal Nature, which is great, by the way. And the researchers in that found that overlearning rapidly and strongly stabilizes the learning state, which, of course, improves long-term retention. Now, one thing to note, the researchers did mention that this seems to work best for motor skills, but they also mentioned that more research is needed because there's just not a lot of it out there. So take all this with a grain of salt. It seems to work, right? So think of these as strong suggestions. Like all of this research is just a strong suggestion, right? So I think it's a good starting point, but there are always variations. Now, there are some nuances to overlearning. I mentioned uh, performance psychologist Noah Kageyama. He has an article where he mentions some evidence that suggests that 50% overlearning is the minimum that we need to get some benefit, and 100% overlearning seems to be the maximum. Anything over 100% doesn't seem to help much. In fact, if we do too much repetitions like anything else, we can get hurt and we can have diminishing returns. Let's add some numbers into this. So for example, if let's say you reach your goal, you're working on a phrase and you reach your goal, you've done the 70 to 85% um, success strategy, you've gotten where you wanted to get to, you don't need to improve it anymore. Now your goal becomes long-term retention rather than improvement. So next time you sit down to work on that phrase, you work on it once and shoot, you make a mistake, no big deal. The second time you get it right, right? Then that means you need to do a minimum of 50% overlearning, which is just one more repetition, or a maximum of 100% overlearning, which is two repetitions, in order to stabilize that into long-term memory. Now, success rate, and overlearning, of course, are not enough. <laughs> there, there are quite a few more strategies like retrieval practice, variable practice, and other things that I'll talk about in future videos that we need to include in practice to, to be as efficient as possible. But I think, at least with the information that I presented in this video, we have an excellent starting point for, effect, for an effective practice routine when it comes to repetitions, which, of course, is what we engage in the most in a practice session. In a practice session. So let's do a quick recap and take a look at some important takeaways. Number one is, once again, to always end your total repetitions for each set around a 70% success rate. You can progressively increase that toward 100%. And of course, if it's, if it's cognitive work, around 85%. If it's more motor skill, around 70, 70%. Number two, once again, keep your total repetitions low, especially your incorrect repetitions. That's as low as possible for best results. Number three, always use interleave practice. In other words, instead of repeating one thing over and over again, and then the next thing over and over again, Work in sets like ABC, ABC, ABC. Number four, remember to be strategic with your repetitions. You always want to have a plan and a goal when you repeat something. Don't just repeat for repetition's sake. That's not going to get you anywhere. You always have, want to have a plan and a strategy in order to make the most amount of progress. Number five, remember to be realistic. It's not likely that you're going to hit 100% success in one practice session. It takes time and consistency, right? Small improvements over time are really the key. Uh, in order for us to consolidate and significantly develop a motor skill. And, and in any event, if you are hitting close to 100% in your practice sessions, then that means the material is too easy for you, or maybe you've just reached your goal. If it's too easy, you're obviously not going to make improvement. If you've reached your goal, then you want to use overlearning to keep that into long-term practice, right? So again, if you're working on something new, 70% success. If you've gotten it, overlearning 50 to 100% repetitions of that phrase. And finally, takeaway number six is that there are individual differences to consider, and I think that's just part of being human. Not everyone is going to start at a 70% success rate. You might not get there the first time you practice something. You might start at a 50% success rate or 60%. And please don't beat yourself up about that. That's really totally okay. I think as long as you're actively working on improving and trying to reach that goal of 70 to 85%, then you're going in the right direction. So if it doesn't happen today, try tomorrow and then try the next day and the next day, right? Just make sure to have a plan and move toward that 70 to 85% success rate. And you're, you're going to eventually start to see results and you're going to be happy about that. Okay. So just be patient, have fun, stay relaxed. All right. 
Okay, so we have covered a lot of information on the science of optimal repetition, but of course, there is a lot more to explore in terms of effective practice techniques, one of which is a video that I made on how to increase your tempo, where I share one of my absolute favorite speed building strategies. It's not the only one, but it's one that I use quite a bit and I think you will really benefit from. So if you wanna get your playing up to that next level and increase your tempo, make sure to check that out. That's gonna be up on the screen. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.